mean, at this point, Penny should just add her name to BB and CeCe's birth certificate. Daddy, I'm gonna be late for Dante's pool party. Hey, we need you to babysit the twins. Again? That's two weekends in a row. This is so unfair. Why do I always have to change my plan? If it wasn't Tony, Tony, oh. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for tuning back in. I'm back with another Proud Family video. And this is not gonna necessarily be a character analysis because I'm talking about Penny, but because Penny is the main protagonist, I can do so many different videos, so many different angles, I can go with her character. So she's not gonna get a character breakdown. I'm just gonna do different versions of a character breakdown discussing different topics. I got Kiwi with me. She wanted to join me with this video. She watches the show with me, so you know. Specifically for this video, I want to talk about the parentification of Penny Proud and the ramifications of that, the effects of that, the future effects, and how we have seen that progress throughout the show, the original and in the reboot. Parentification can go in many different ways, as many different examples of it. The main example I want to talk about with Penny, and I'm sure it's been a running gag of the show, the creators, the writers, they know it because they even brought it up and they expanded on it in the reboot, which I'm going to talk about. It's really when the older sibling of a family or the older child is almost forced into a parental role, taking care of the younger siblings, and the responsibility is kind of forced upon them against their will. And in so many ways, it's presented to them like that's what they're supposed to do. That's the least you can do. We don't ask you to do much around here as it is. This is the least you can And here's do. where I want to speak on another topic. Older siblings being held responsible for their younger siblings just because. Another running gag in the show is how Penny has to sacrifice her free time with her friends in order to babysit BB and Cece. What does y'all take on this? I say it's not the older sibling's fault the parents decided to have kids after them. Of course, being the older sibling, you would want to help out in some way, especially if they're in the early stages of life. But I don't think Penny should consistently have the burden of having BB and Cece dumped on her with no remorse. It creates resentment not only towards her parents, but unfortunately towards her brother and sister too. It doesn't help that they can be wild to look after sometimes, which will be explained. And I've talked about this many different times. I'm just dedicating a whole entire video to this topic because when I talked about it, Surprisingly, or really not surprisingly, a lot of people could relate to it. A lot of people had their own stories and their own ideas and debates about it. A lot of people had the sentiment of, oh, I was the older sibling. I had to help take care of my younger siblings. It was no problem. I didn't mind doing it. It was what it was. You know, as an older sibling, that's almost like an unspoken responsibility you're supposed to take on, especially depending on how old you are. Like if you're in your teens or, you know, maybe early 20s, you can see that happening, right? But sometimes this starts when you're like six, seven, eight, nine years old. With Penny, we see this happening in her formative years, her teenage years, 14, 15, 16. That's when you're really getting into your own, you know, puberty, all that different type of stuff. And sometimes, many times, Penny has to put her social life and her own responsibilities on hold just to take care of BB and CC, just to watch BB and CC. This was such a running gag that if you pay attention to the intros of the original and the reboot, you can see BB and CC disrupting Penny's social life. You and me will always be tight. Memory every single day and night. Always be tight. Family every day and every night. Even when you start. And sometimes parents do it in a way where it doesn't feel like a forced responsibility. Sometimes it's like, oh, we're going out for tonight. If you're of age, you of a certain age. You can stay home by yourself. You can watch your little brother, your little sister. But when you're asked over and over again to the point where you got to put your things on hold as a grown teenager, just to watch your little brother and sister, just to do this for them, just to clean the house, just then it's kind of like now you're taking advantage. And this could lead to many different things like depression, all kind of issues. You think you know, you have no idea. Oh, I can't stand them. And these behaviors of parentification that slowly develop, that slowly being ingrained into the older sibling can cause issues in their own relationships when they get older, in their own parenting styles when they get older, or even just in general, their social life. Hey, Penny, let's go. I have to babysit the twins. Again? Again? Dang, girl. Well, we're going to the P-R-T-E. <laughs> 
Penny plans on going to the museum with her friends, but tells them she's now stuck with Bibi and Cece, and even they have had enough. Zang! Again? What's up with that? They're not your kids. Everywhere they go, they gotta bring the stroller. Have fun! Remember, no boys! Oh my god! Now I know everybody doesn't have the perfect family. Nobody has the perfect family. Most people I know who have younger brothers and sisters would want to have some type of great relationship with them. Now we all know those common tropes we see on TV shows and movies where the brother and sister don't really get along. There's some type of rivalry between them. The brother is kind of obnoxious or the sister is kind of like uptight or really into social media. And it's like a, they don't really connect. And even with the younger to older, like the older sibling don't really pay the younger ones no mind. That's a common trope we see. But with Penny, you can tell she has love for her baby brother and sister, but she should feel like their big sister, not their second mother. Who could forget about that Al Roker episode from the original series where Penny wished that BB and CC were older because she got so tired of taking care of them? Man, I wish you guys were old enough to take care of yourselves. And you know another thing I found interesting? Another character arc you'll find with Penny in relation to especially Oscar is there'll be this thing where they know she's growing up, but they don't want her to grow up too fast. They and boys are being too fast, right? But they don't realize how fast they're making Penny grow up by having to always babysit BB and CC. Y'all see this? Y'all see this? Kiwi. Oh my God. I just found it ironic how parents like Oscar and Trudy don't realize how they can make their kids grow up faster than they should. You worried about this and the clothes she wear and the boys she hang out with, but you're not worried about her having to babysit her brother and sister all the time to the point where she feels like their second parent, to the point where she's bailing on her own social life. Speaking of the reboot, I really love the episode where we find out that BB has autism because it gave us a deeper look into how Penny feels, right? Because just to make this clear, not to say that autism is a mental handicap or BB is going to need all this extra attention, but most of us know if you research it or if you have siblings that have autism or if you have it yourself, you may interact with the world or other people differently. It doesn't mean that it's weird. It just may be different than what most people would expect or what most people are used to, especially in a toddler like BB. BB is impossible, mama. But knowing Trudy and Oscar and their old fashioned ways, they'll still push him and CC on Penny. And I like how they even had Penny explain this to the child psychologist in the reboot episode where they found out he had autism. There's nothing wrong with BB. Oscar, relax. Following a similar pattern, BB ends up on a high shelf in the classroom and Oscar snatches him up as he and Trudy walks out the classroom. Penny turns around to apologize for Oscar's behavior, but Dr. Lord turns to her concerns to Penny and her feelings. They're gonna turn around and put BB on me. I just know it. And you resent that. See, this brings me back to my statements earlier about Penny's resentments. Even as a child psychologist with younger children, Dr. Lord could still sense a sadness in Penny that needed to be explored. Penny realized that even with BB's diagnosis of being on the spectrum, her parents would most likely still stick her with the responsibility of looking after them. Not saying she never should, but it should be at her own will, not forced upon her. Dr. Lord then offers Penny her services for free to talk to her anytime. And while they explored that in the episode where they found out BB has autism, I really want them to dig deeper in season three and really have Penny explain to Trudy and Oscar how that's affecting her. She talked to the child psychologist, but she didn't really talk to them. I really want them to have Penny explain it to them where they can feel like, wow, this is really affecting her. Not in a demoralizing way, a subconscious way. I really think that would make for a great episode, or if not a whole episode, at least like a B plot. And with that, I wanna know what's y'all guys' opinions on the parentification of Penny? The way we've seen it throughout the show, the old show, the new reboot. What do you think they want to do with that gag? Do you think they're just going to keep the gag or do you think they're going to address it? They addressed it in the episode where BB has autism, but it was kind of like a little segue, a little side note. She talked to the psychologist, but she didn't really talk to the parents. What do you think they're going to do with that gag and that storyline of Penny always being relegated or forced? to babysit BB and Cece, being manipulated into thinking that's what you should do anyway. That's the least you can do. What does y'all take on that?
please leave your comments down below. This should be a really interesting discussion. I've talked about this before, but I never did a whole entire video about it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all gonna have a lot to say. A lot of y'all gonna have your own personal stories. Let's really talk about this in the proud family, but just in general. Like, what is y'all take on preventification and the effects it can have on you? The effects it had on you or the effects it can have on you in the future when you have your own kids. Please don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see y'all in the next video.